Hey everyone, Charlie here. Hope you're all doing well. So in just a couple days here, it is going to be my one year anniversary here in Japan. And to mark the occasion, I thought I would make a series of videos sort of highlighting the things that I've learned, the mistakes I've made um, about living in Japan, about learning Japanese, about making friends, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff, right? And so uh, this very first video today, I thought I would get some of the I guess negative things out of the way, but maybe they're just more like learning experiences, which is a much better, much more healthy way to look at them, I think. So um, hopefully I can share these experiences with you, and if you're planning on coming here to start teaching or uh, whatever the case may be, hopefully um, this knowledge will help you to avoid the same mistakes. The first mistake I think I made when I came to Japan was I had always wanted to come to Japan, but that said when I came here and suddenly I didn't have any friends, I didn't have a support system in place or anything like that it was um, it was very dramatic and, and for the first probably six months it was a very very tough uh, series of growing pains and learning experiences one of the things that I did uh, thinking that I would I would sort of deal with or rather avoid that sort of that sort of immediate depression that came with not with not having that support structure when I came here was sort of sink my money into things that uh, would help pass the time and keep me distracted and things like that. So um, one, one of the biggest purchases I made was a, a Pokemon uh, themed Nintendo 3DS, which at the time seemed like a fantastic idea. It certainly passed the time, but in the end, looking back on it now, it sort of fed into that feeling of loneliness and feeling like the other, you know. Uh, grief and uh, that, that trauma of, of sudden change can make you do some really stupid things but also that um, looking back on it now it would have been much better for me to go back and spend that money on, on Japanese study books on doing a little bit of traveling around the area um, getting to know my area a bit better from the get-go but what can you do that does however lead me into my second mistake which is waiting a little too long to start studying Japanese again uh, seriously I couldn't really have any sort of interesting or meaningful conversation with anybody but I didn't really get very serious about um, studying Japanese and and under I, I didn't really understand why I needed it too much until until about June of this of this year or maybe maybe even July when I started to realize that the reason why I was probably why I wasn't really enjoying my time here um, in the way that I knew I should be was because I was I wasn't doing I wasn't putting in the work my options then were like okay well you can either be lonely and buy yourself Nintendo DS games and sit in your apartment for a long time and waste your life or you can start putting in the work and yes it's going to be annoying and frustrating and and all these other all these other negative feelings but it's also and this turned out to be the case, it's going to be sort of a uh, door opening, right? And so from the time that I started to really learn Japanese very, 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 very quickly, I began being able to talk to people. It stopped being just these like two sentence interactions where they quickly realized after asking me where I was from and what I was doing here that I, I couldn't say anything else to them. So um, once it got to the point where I could start to explain more about myself and ask questions back, right, then relationships started to form and it stopped being this sort of completely superficial single sentence interaction between a curious Japanese and, and a foreigner, right? It became, it became something more real. So the third and final crucial sort of mistake, I guess, that shaped a lot of my early time here was this weird uh, sense that I was both too afraid to try out things that were too extremely new while wanting to avoid anything that felt too much like home. So much of the time I wanted to do something or I would see something, but my my lack of, I, I felt my lack of Japanese or my lack of familiarity with a place, like I would get there and be like, oh, this is too much, and I would just turn around and walk away, right? Um, instead of sort of, uh, I don't know, embracing the fear of the experience a little bit and embracing that unknown. Um, and at the same time, I, I was sort of, focused on not replicating my life in America, right? Like, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to find a coffee shop and spend some of my off days there writing or reading because guess what, that's what I could do back home. Yeah, it sucks to give into that fear, right, of new experiences and it's something I've been a lot better at recently. Um, and the thing is that if you want to make friends and you want to 
live here instead of being like a long-term tourist, I think really, yeah, you just gotta kick yourself in the ass. You get over that fear really quickly. It'll help you learn Japanese a lot quicker because people, um, you know, you'll encounter more people who are interested in talking to you. And yeah, you'll just see a lot of, a lot more and come to appreciate your, your area more. Um, but speaking to the other point I've made, there is nothing wrong with coming to a new place and still loving to do the same things as you did when you were back home. Um, I wasn't sure about Hukui for, for a really, really long time. And I, I made this point in, in a previous video, but quite recently I've discovered a, uh, a coffee shop that I am just, I'm just in love with. And I can go there and I can sit there all day after buying a coffee and I can meet some random people my age. Um, and yeah, I can just sit there and read and write and it feels to me more like home. And I've thought about this a bit and I'm, I'm rather convinced that it's not because that feels like America, it's because those are things that are really, really important to me, having a space that I can read and write in very, very comfortably. So now that i found that place, Japan has stopped feeling, not, not, not Japan, Fukui, this place that I'm in, my, my city, right, has stopped feeling like it's, it's sort of like a, a cheap replacement for home. So those are just the biggest sort of mistakes that I think I have made since I since I came to Japan almost one year ago. If you guys have lived here, or you're living here now, or you've lived in another place uh, for an extended period of time, I would love to hear how your experiences match up to mine. Please let me know down in the comments below. I'd really love to talk to you guys about that. And um, yeah, thanks guys as always for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I will see you very, very soon indeed. We're gonna have a couple of these coming out within the next week. So thanks guys, cheers.